What's up everyone, it's Roger and James here from this Kingdom Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about Toys R Us, the bankruptcy issue that's going on in the US and around the world right now, and how it's going to affect Disney. Now, the first impact it did have, primarily, was it took a serious knock to Hasbro, Jack uh, Pacific, and a few other toy makers' um, share prices. They dipped, I mean, Toys R Us sell a ton of Disney merchandise. They sell a ton of it. Um, but I'm going to be honest, this whole thing with Toys R Us being, and it's like, you sort of sitting there going, yeah, well, I'm, I'm not surprised. It's like, they're living in a, they seem to be a company that was living on its reputation and not really living in the real world of right now. It's not competitive on pricing. The stores are usually empty when you go there. There's nobody there. You know, every time I go to my local one, there's very, very little there. The few times I have gone in to get something on day of release, they didn't have it out. And I never use it online because they have stupid shipping charges that other shops don't. The prices aren't good to begin with. It just feels like this, you know, and a lot of people have that reminisce. Oh my God, Toys R Us are closing. When did you last go to a store? Oh, 20 years ago. <laughs> it's like, you know, there's a well, the kind of thing of reminiscing about a brand, but not actually funding it. In in fairness, if you went to a Toys R Us 20 years ago, it looks the same now. Yeah. Just the toys are different, but man, the layout. The Transformers, the, the, Ninja Turtles, Star Wars, they've all gone. They're just completely gone. They don't yeah. exist anymore. Transformers <laughs> are gone. No, I, I just meant the toys are updated for for the yeah. modern market. But I don't. I I can't speak to the UK, obviously. Mm. But in the area that I'm in, um, going into the Toys R Us, there's normally people there. I've never yeah. really experienced like, oh, mm. there's nobody here. Um, there's normally plenty of people are around. They've got their little kids, and you know they're shopping. You know whatever the the kid mm. toy du jour is. It's loaded with freaking fidget spinners over here yeah. like all over the place but um but yeah i feel like i've been transported in time back like 30 years and not in a good way yeah. not in that like nostalgia oh i remember all the toys and yeah. i never wanted to grow up and all that stuff no it's like got you guys need to clean your floors and maybe do something with the ceilings and maybe get some you know racks that don't have tetanus on them and it, yeah. In many ways, Toys R Us at the moment, at least near me, and I'm not in, you know, like a, a low income area. I'm yeah. in a, a fairly uh, upper middle class area for for where the Toys R Us I go to is, and it's just like uh, you're a half step up from Walmart. Mm. You guys need to work on this. Yeah, I mean, for me, you know, I mean, there's been lots of things thrown around, like the fact of the the, the online prices are not competitive against. Um, like Amazon, you know, Walmart, and like the supermarkets here, they're all they've all been chipping at the toy market because they take all the top toys and sell them a lot cheaper. Um, so that's been a big issue. It's funny because literally the same the next day, Smith's Toys, which is our second biggest like toy company, they said that their profits are up seventy percent. So it's a little bit like, well, you got one company just sort of having major problems, and the other one are going. Well, we got we 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 take it's like yeah because you're you're being competitive your your shipping charges are half the amount you need to spend on Toys R Us you're being competitive and therefore that is the issue Toys R Us I just think they just got a little bit like we're Toys R Us and we can do what you like because we're just gonna rip off parents at Christmas that's basically was the game of it's that's that's what it feels like. Well, we are going to buy presents for your kids at birthdays and Christmas, and you're going to come in and spend money, and we know you're going to come in, and that, and you're just lazy. And I think that's that just feels like where it's come from. Well, they had a very similar mentality, it seems, to uh, another chain, which was Kmart uh, or Sears, depending mm. on you know which part of the country you're in, where Kmart for a very long time definitely took this approach of like people know our brand, people will go to our brand simply because it's what they've always done yeah. and they haven't factored in, well, I can get the same product on Amazon cheaper next day, free shipping or two-day shipping, whatever. And why would I bother going into your store if I can get a better quality product cheaper, faster? Yeah. And Toys R Us is definitely the same because uh, you, you look at some of their products. Back when Disney Infinity was still mm. going strong, when Skylanders was still going strong, their items 
were priced higher than their competitors. Yeah. Normally by a dollar or two, their Legos are have like a, a 10% markup on them. Why would I possibly go yeah. to Toys R Us to buy these unless it's an exclusive? Like, you'd have to go to the Toys R Us to get, I, I don't even know, like the Kylo Ren light-up yeah. effects or whatever. Well, I, that was I, rem it. I remember being on vacation in Disney World um, when Crystal Sully came out and Crystal Lightning McQueen. Right, the crystals. Uh, and I remember driving into two or three different Toys R Uses like, I was stupid. I'm wasting time on my valuable Walt Disney World trip trying to find a crystal figure in the premium atlas. And it was like, like, mom, it's like, I can't find it. Eventually got them and stuff. But yeah, you said they were overpriced. You know, they were full. To me, the problem is with this is the industry is changing. And as a whole, online stores versus street stores, um, there is a fight going on. And stores have got higher costs than online. But the trouble is, if you do not compete on those prices your online your stores are just going to keep closing because you need that hub that entrance point into it um so there is a big price difference so i mean i was looking at some figures yesterday you know some action figures and some stuff like last night and it's like you look at toys r us and like you can't pre-order anything you can't this the prices were high the shipping was cost like there was five other companies doing better products or the same product either cheaper or pre-order or something like that and it was, it was like you're not catering to anything. You're just, you. It's like this whole thing. Of, this whole thing at the moment with their chapter eleven, where they're reef. It's like, and they're trying to spin it to the point of like, oh, we're gonna. Re it's like, no, you've you've got you've cocked you've cocked up so much that you're having to do this. And you can't spin it that this is good for the business, because even though the UK version is not affected by this, the brand problem is. It's like if I was pre-ordering my kids' presents for Christmas, I would not be going into Toys R Us putting a pre-order down. No, and I think uh, one of the only reasons that people continued to use uh, Toys R Us in the U.S. was that they they had a very good layaway policy. Mm -hmm. You know, you could um, yeah. pay in installments, and they they were very good about it. They didn't charge a, a yeah. particularly large interest relative to their competitors. But at a certain point, too, you've got to go. Well, yeah, you you've got the good layaway. You, yeah, you've got the the layaway policy here, but it's just flat out cheaper over yeah. here. And, you know, it's very fun to blame Amazon yeah. or eBay for stuff like this. But the simple fact of the matter is that's just how the market yeah. is. Uh, yeah. You can blame Amazon, but if Amazon wasn't there, someone else would be doing it the same way. That's how capitalism is supposed to work yeah. in theory. Um, it, it destroyed Borders, a bookstore over here uh, in the States. It has wrecked havoc on Sears and Kmart. Uh, Circuit City, you know, all these ones that have refused to adapt to the current climate. Yeah. So. It definitely feels to me like the trouble is they can't compete online at the same price. You know, they can't because they have got higher overheads. But the problem is, is by, like you say, the layaway, you're paying for it because you're paying for the higher cost. Right. And I think and, that's the issue. And yeah, you, you've, that, well, that's part of, you know, paying for anything in installments, of course, is you're always going to pay a yeah. higher cost for it. That's how it works. But on top of that, and I think what your point is, you're also paying the higher cost of it being a Toys R Us toy yeah. in general. I can't speak to stuff outside of Legos and Disney Infinity mm -hmm. and whatnot, but I strongly suspect that a lot of those items have markups as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, the board games, um, the action figures, you know, the Star Wars toys, the, the Transformers mm -hmm. toys, all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I you know when we went to New York and you had the big Toys R Us in there, it was always an experience. And those kind of things, that's what, you know, for me, like Toys R Us, that New York Times Square store, was a special place. It was unique. Um, but you go to your little store, it doesn't have that. And, you know, the video game market, they 20 years ago or something like that, they had 20% of the video game market. Now they have like 1% or 2%. People don't buy there the same way. You know, they've not been keeping up with anything. And it's finally caught up with them. You know, from Disney's point of view, you know, there is that thing of, they sell a lot of merchandise, toys, um, stars, you know. And I was along the lines of, well... You know, I think the gut reaction is the toy industry is taking a hit. And it's like, no, because they would just buy these toys at other locations. If Toys R Us closed tomorrow, all those same toys are going to get purchased somewhere else. It literally and is. It's, there's not going to be like, well, there's no Toys R Us anymore. Well, then I can't buy a toy. You you can. It was, yeah. they, they're somewhere else. 
Yeah, kids are going to have to go back to rolling hoops down the middle of the street, you know, mm. just like the olden days, because toys won't exist anymore. No. Yeah. Um, no, actually, as far as Disney is concerned, they're probably like, well, this is fantastic because this gives us uh, more, or gives people more incentive to come to the Disney stores for their Disney. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. See, I probably come out from a different angle because I feel like Disney Store did they did they've actually were fighting this um, a lot more before it because they've been closing stores left, right, and center. Um, I was watching, uh, reading about it the other day. Of that, I think out in America they were not quite done, but over here. They've closed pretty much 90% of the stores. You know, and they've been closing them in the U.S. because they can't, they, they're running at a loss. I mean, Disney Store are very expensive anyway. Um, I just wish they had a cheaper shipping offer. I just spend £50 or spend £75 for free shipping feels so old-fashioned. And so, you know, if they had a £25 or a £20 delivery, I'd use them so much more. It's, right, and I do feel that the Disney Store again. They have that strategy of being a little bit blasé about the fact of this is you know, there's a new Hulk planet or a new Thor Ragnarok Hulk figure that I want to get twenty five quid, but I have to spend fifty quid to get shipping, or it's going to cost me five pound to buy. Things like that are like you know, especially I think because Amazon have you know becoming I haven't become an Amazon Prime member of just like oh yeah, come in now it's. You know, yeah. there's no shipping cost. You think it's they are going to have to compete, and I think Disney, you know, they are going to be closing stores down because they are an experience and they are selling other products, but that can only get you so far. Right, and they do have to be very careful about how they approach this because Disney could definitely take the idea that we're Disney. If people want our product, they'll pay the extra premium price. And we've seen that's not true. No. You you might you might be able to sell it to a certain number of people because money's not an option to them. That must be nice, but yeah. m- the majority of people, you know, they, they've got to make decisions. You know, do I want to get this or do I want to get that? Um, and if it comes down to, well, I can get this item for twenty dollars, or I can get that item for thirty dollars, but I'll get the same satisfaction out of both of them. Then I'm going with the twenty dollar yeah. one. Regardless of where, it, it might not be like the premium Disney mm. experience. It, it might be slightly knockoff or it might be a completely different franchise. But, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to spend the extra money if I don't feel I'm getting value from it. No, it definitely feels like the trouble is everything's changing. And the trouble is chasing the cheapest isn't always the best. You do, you know, you don't want to end up with pound land. You know, prompt, there are problems at the bottom end. You know, you can ask Uber here in London for the for that issue. You know, if you go to the I'd cheapest, not. <laughs> if you go to the cheapest point, it can cause problems. And this is luckily for Disney, they got out. They got a lot out of the of the. You know, they will just sell their toys to which whoever, wherever the people are. Walmart, came, you know, wherever the people are, they will be able to buy them. Amazon, you know, so they're in a better position. It just, I think, it just shook, and I think after Christmas, they will probably be gone. Yeah, they'll they'll struggle on for a couple months, but by June they'll be gone. And you'll, you'll probably start seeing clearance sales right after Christmas, and then the clearance sales will you know do that that um and in, slightly increasing. We're starting at fifty percent off, then seventy five percent off, and then ninety percent off when the only thing left on the shelves are you know secret lives of pets toys i mean or whatever. yeah i mean i think i still think toys R Us will continue on as an online retailer even if they close all the stores you know they do a Woolworths thing like they did over here where you know, they will just become online but maybe they need to do some trimming maybe they need to start trimming the fat on some of these stores they're having three thousand stores you have two or 1500 you know start and make your online website a focus and you know They've got to change strategy because it isn't working whatever they're doing. But I'd love to know your thoughts. Comment below. You can get in touch with us over at thiskingdom.com where they can get hold of you, James. And find me at heroiclegacy.com. And Roger's apparently dying. Yeah, just dying slightly. <laughs> On that note, guys, thank you very much for watching. See you guys soon. <laughs>